Hi, it's Mr. Rowe from Creative Build. I have many more unique videos planned, so click subscribe if you like this one. In this video, I will be creating an upper and lower die to go in our home built hydraulic press to create a scallop shape for uh, the front of a bar. I have made a similar scallop shape, like you see here, uh, for the front of this reception desk for a hotel in Philadelphia. But I need to do one that's larger this time. Hi, right, so I'm working on a project where we're creating a large oval bar and the front face of it is going to have this steel powder coated bar face in a scallop shape. So you can see here is an overhead view of the oval bar. Um, it's about 24 feet long by about almost 15 feet wide. So it's quite a large oval bar and this bar face is going to go all the way around the outside. So you can see here the designer created the profile that they wanted approximately it's almost three inches by about three quarters of an inch high so I need to figure out how to make that. So this is kind of my rough sketch concept of the upper die how we're going to form that in our press. So I decided to use a 2 by 10 inch solid maple block and try a 3 inch hole saw pushing the material on a 45 degree angle through to try and create the lower half curve of the scallop. It's, it's working. Um, it's funny, the vibrations actually of the saw are making it feed through automatically on the uh, Malamine. Um, but it's going to take for freaking ever. Now that's better. Some nice chips flying off there. Um, it's cutting way faster. I have three of these grooves to cut, so um, I'm happy with the speed this is doing. Uh, I'll show you in a bit here what the actual cutter is, but um, I need to make three grooves. I'm working on the second one here, you can see, and the chips are just flying off. And I don't even have to feed it in. It's actually, the gravity is self-feeding so what I'm making is is basically a progression die the lower half here so the steel there'll be three grooves and the steel will be basically formed in the first groove and then restamped in the second and third um, and that basically makes sure that you have the same uh, spacing between each scallop here uh, you can see the cutters wearing out uh, it's getting dull and I was almost at the end so I just kind of let had to kind of force it through to get the job done. I didn't want to mess around. These these things are pretty hard to sharpen. So I'll show you uh, which cutter this is here in a second. It's a, a Milwaukee switchblade and they're usually used by plumbers uh, to hog through wood for uh, drain pipes and, and vent pipes in houses. And if you've ever used one, you really got to hang on to this thing because it hogs through wood like crazy. It's got that one heavy duty cutting blade right there. They're pretty wicked, way better than a hole saw for uh, doing rough holes. So here's the concept for the upper die. It's uh, three pipes that will form the scallop shape and uh, basically some drop that I had kicking around the shop to fasten it into my press. This is a home built hydraulic press. We made it years ago to do a specific job where we needed both cylinders to work independently. But I've, I've used it for doing uh, just standard braking sometimes or making custom dies. It's on this large cart so I can move it around. Uh, the, the press bed is fully adjustable. I plan on making a video specifically about this press uh, and some of the projects we've done before. The upper die fits in there with those keeper plates. The hydraulic cylinders are held in by these uh, keeper plates here and I could adjust the cylinders uh, to be side by side if I wanted or add more cylinders uh, in between if I needed some more tonnage. We made the press to form these large radius curves on this old piece of riveted steel uh, to make a giant table. So here I'm setting up the uh, plates that will be held in by the keeper plates in the upper ram of the press. I'm getting everything set up here. Everything needs to be perfectly aligned so the the upper die will uh, 
will line up properly with the lower die. Uh, these are the keeper plates that will hold the upper die in place. Um, I have them in various lengths, so depending on which, what size uh, part we're forming, I can swap things out pretty easily. Now that I have everything aligned uh, and I'm happy, I'm bringing the press down to put some pressure on it while um, welding all the pieces together. That way everything's held in the right spot and there'll be less force on the welds uh, when it gets to the bottom. Uh, here I'm just tacking uh, all the tubes in place. There's a piece of channel uh, that's going to hold all three pipes together. And then another piece of channel is going up to the, the upper ram to where the keeper plates are. I'm just tacking everything right now. I'll open it up later and uh, do a little more final welding. So I'm adding a piece of three quarter inch plywood to the bottom of the maple block just to try and prevent some uh, splitting possibly of the maple. Uh, just gives it some extra rigidity. And then I'm going to add on each side a couple more blocks to help keep the maple block in place so there's no movement hopefully that will be after I'm done screwing that on that will be clamped down to the the press bed the press is set up to do approximately 32 tons right now I'm only going to be pressing 24 gauge steel I can uh, do up to about 50 tons with this press Okay, so here we go, first try. I, I'm just uh, proving out that the, the scallop shape um, will end up being what I want it to be with the proper spacing, the sp proper uh, radius. And um, later on I'll be building a basically a feeder to ensure that the material is fed in square with the die. But for right now I'm just proving it out to see whether or not it's gonna work and um, it's looking pretty good so far. There'll be about 10, 10 foot sheets that I need to make. So it's not like a high volume production or anything like that. This is just for wrapping around that entire bar. And as you see there, um, I think I'm pretty pleased with uh, how it turned out. So that's the end of part one of this three-part series of the Oval Bar, which will make its home in a new brewery in Toronto, Ontario. I have many more unique videos planned, so click subscribe if you like this one.